Good morning, brothers and sisters, and everyone in the Silicon Valley Alliance Church. Um, welcome to the Easter Sunday service. I want to wish everyone happy Easter, for our Savior, Jesus Christ, has risen. Our Lord has trampled death. He has resurrected, and He shall reign forever. Let's all look at Psalm um, chapter 103, and verse 1 to 12. It says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forgot, forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Praise him. Let us all pray together. Heavenly Father, as we um, sing to you and worship you this morning, we're so thankful that our hearts are renewed and we have hope in us through your sacrifice and through your resurrection. Lord, you loved this world so much that you gave your one and only Son so that we might be called your children too. And Father, we, we confess that we have sins and we have darkness in our hearts, but you took them with you to the cross and you died on our behalf. And ultimately, Lord, you ripped sins apart, you trampled death, and you rose to life. Lord, you're so powerful and so mighty and so loving. You're our only source of renewal and you're our one and only Savior. Lord, help us to live in this gladness and grace of Easter Sunday, not just today, but every day, Lord. And help us to walk in your light and in your grace and tell the good news to the world. For all the glory and honor belong to you, Lord. We praise you. And we pray this all in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone oh Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 to 21 I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me the life I now live in the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law Christ died for nothing. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul, this cornerstone. Solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Of love. 
Brothers and sisters, welcome to Silicon Valley Alliance Church to our English worship. I want to give thanks to the Lord, even uh, in, during this uh, pandemic time. I know we feel that uh, things is getting better. I hope it is getting better. But uh, we are very much uh, still uh, under these uh, restrictions. But we are thankful. Not only we uh, have a chance to serve a community. So on behalf of the church, once again, I thank you for your prayer and for your support. Even though you may not come out uh, to join that uh, 20 some brothers and sisters uh, yesterday uh, to uh, serve our community, but we do appreciate your prayer. We do appreciate uh, your support uh, financially or, or in many ways. And we thank the Lord. Uh, it is a joint effort. We were able, able to uh, 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 get together, uh, put together uh, an evangelistic article entitled, Did He Rise from the Dead? Did Jesus indeed? rise from the dead, dead. and uh, we were able to uh, distribute this article to uh, all the cars that come in to our parking lot and this is our ultimate goal we want to uh, lead people to christ we want to know our reason lord to a point that uh, we are compelled to uh, make him known so i will ask you to continue to pray uh, as we try to uh, reach out to these uh, families uh, who come uh, to our church parking lot and we are also grateful on march 27 we were able to uh, invite uh, the people who attended uh, the weekly Kids Corner Outreach uh, program uh, when uh, we uh, serve families who have kids from uh, zero to uh, two years old. And uh, with, uh, many of them came out uh, to join this uh, parking lot eight hunt activities. So please continue to pray for this uh, family. And uh, it is uh, also very exciting. Uh, yesterday, well, we have our own children ministry, Easter uh, drive through celebrations and uh, uh, many of our kids uh, came uh, to our parking lot to meet uh, their teachers and uh, to uh, celebrate uh, the, re the resurrection of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And today as we uh, gather here, uh, some of us uh, have already uh, been through uh, the outdoor service uh, today and uh, it is uh, good that uh, we can um, meet and worship differently, but uh, we are together because we are serving, we are worshipping the same risen uh, Lord. And may us continue to uh, experience the hope that our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ uh, brought us. And I also want you to uh, continue to uh, remember the children uh, ministry uh, as we will have uh, children worship uh, today, uh, right at this uh, moment. Uh, for uh, uh, kids from uh, grade 1 to grade 5. So pray that uh, as they join this uh, Zoom uh, worship, uh, that uh, their heart will be uh, united and they will uh, uh, <clears throat> be able to worship our risen Lord. Let's join our hearts together as we pray. Father, once again, we come before you. Yes, Lord, every Sunday when we gather, we gather for no other reason but one, that is to celebrate you have risen from the Lord, from the death, and Lord, we just we are just thankful for the fact that uh, it is because of your resurrection. Your resurrection defined the hope in our lives, and Father, I just pray that you continue to uh, uh, make this hope alive in us. May each and every one of us experience the power of your resurrection. Yes, right, especially in this world that is uh, filled with a, a chaos. And Father, it is uh, on your resurrection, I want to pray for the families who are mourning the loss of their loved one. I want to pray for those who are going through harsh treatment for their sickness. And Lord, I want to uh, uh, pray for the, the families of this uh, uh, brother and sister who are sick. Lord, we are indeed grateful. Not only we have you as our Lord, you have conquered, not just death, but you have conquered sin. And Father, as we come together today to worship you and to celebrate, Father, may you help us. Not only we understand and we know intellectually that you have risen from the death. You have conquered death and you have conquered sin. But Father, help us to truly experience your power, the power of resurrection in our lives. Father, may you help us to experience the hope that we can have in you, this unique hope and unique peace that can only be found and granted 
by you. And Father, we are also grateful. It is because of who you are. It is because of our love for you, we bring before you the tithes and offering. And Lord, I pray that you, you set us apart these uh, resources for your own work. And Father, may you continue to bless those who give cheerfully. And Lord, as we come before you, as we continue to ponder on the reality of your resurrection, as we look at our hope in you, being the living hope, may you speak to our hearts. In Christ's victorious name that we pray. Amen. And now let's join our hearts together as Pastor Warwick come and share with us the message entitled, Living Hope. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and happy Easter. Perhaps no writer in the New Testament captures fully the glory of Easter, maybe better than the Apostle uh, Peter. Um, if you know anything about Peter, um, I'm sure you know that uh, he probably experienced uh, the death of Jesus, probably more so than anybody else uh, in the Bible. Uh, he had previously said to, to Jesus that uh, when everybody else would abandon him, that he would not. But for many of us, we know what happens uh, in his story. Uh, just when there was a pressure uh, going on, uh, when people were coming to, to ask him if he, if he knew Jesus, he did forsake Jesus. In fact, he denied Jesus three times. He, he must have been extremely disappointed by uh, what had happened. And all these events, um, I don't know if, if this was going through his mind, but, you know, after Jesus was, was captured, uh, he was crucified and he died. And all these things must have been playing through uh, Peter's mind at that moment. Um, for Jesus to have died on the cross, and maybe because he thinks that it was his fault, uh, he must have been crushed by this. He, you know, he, he meant so well. Uh, by the things that he said. He had you know, hopes and, and dreams that he thought he would be able to uh, live out. But we know at the end, he was not able to do uh, what he went out to do. And I'm sure there's a lot of people here uh, this morning who might have had the same experiences as Peter, but maybe not so much in a uh, dramatic kind of fashion. Uh, I remember when I was younger, um, I had, you know, sought out hopes and dreams in my life uh, as well. I know a lot of you know uh, that I enjoy running. But one of the other things that I enjoyed when I was younger uh, was not just running, but I also enjoyed drawing and I enjoyed, uh, enjoyed art a lot. And I remember uh, as, a, as a young boy, I always thought that I would get into the field of uh, drawing comics for a living, or doing something related uh, with art. Uh, a lot of people, you know, enjoyed my artwork. A lot of my friends bought the things that I drew. Uh, I even charged my own brother uh, for some of the things that I drew for him. And so I thought I would be able to, to make a living out of this. But then as I got older, I began to realize that uh, art is not something that can really make, uh, make you a lot of money, at least not when, um, when I was a teen. So I began to pursue other things and my, 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 my passion and my desire for drawing kind of died uh, over the years. And it's one of those things that I feel um, I, I could have really pursued it if, had I wanted to. And in, in some ways, I, I wonder what would have happened had I continued to, to go down that path? But I probably will never know. Some of you may have the same uh, hopes and dreams in your life uh, dashed uh, because of circumstances uh, in your life or maybe things are thrust upon you that you have no control over. Um, maybe some of you are going through much more challenging situations than the ones that I just described but whatever you're, you're experiencing or whatever um, um, uh, dreams and hopes that you had hoped for in life that were you know, dashed before, 
whatever you 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 were you know thinking about. All of these moments, all of these hopes, all of these dreams, um, even though they may not be with us uh, anymore. But one of the things that we realize, uh, or we will see about uh, Easter and about the resurrection of of Jesus, is that his resurrection um, was partially designed to relieve and to help us in those moments. It's not just about him conquering death and conquering uh, conquering a uh, sin, uh, and that's definitely something that we celebrate uh, this Easter. But we often forget, or maybe we sometimes don't realize that Easter also stands for the presence of Christ with us. And when he is with us, it meets the pressures of life as they come to us day by day. And if Christianity is, is, is true, if the things that we declare about Jesus' resurrection is true, then not only has he conquered uh, the grave, but he's also able to meet our needs as well, especially uh, in the hour uh, of death and also in the pressures of life, just as he was able to do so in the first century. So we're going to be reading a passage from 1 Peter chapter 1 uh, this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, please uh, turn there. It's going to be found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 12. And I imagine that these words that Peter uh, wrote down was a great source of uh, encouragement, not only for him, but also for all brothers and sisters who had been going through uh, such great trials during those times during those times, and I pray that it will be uh, encouraging for you uh, as well, no matter what trials you are going through uh, at the moment. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 12, and these are the words of God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you may not have seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you search intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. So as we explore the greatness of our salvation, uh, one of the first things that we will see is that there is the hope of salvation. Uh, in verse 3, Peter says that he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter says that we are uh, born again to a living hope. When he speaks of uh, of this living hope, uh, it, it is a hope that, that's living. It is not dead. It means that, the, that this hope is available to us daily, all the time. 
And this idea of, of, of a hope that is living, it, it means that our hope, it's a, a sure thing. It is certain. It is real as opposed to hope that might be dead, um, hope that's deceptive, hope that comes from uh, the world. Uh, when we think about hope in this world, uh, we think about hope that doesn't deliver. Uh, it promises a lot, but at the end, it is still uh, hollow. Uh, hope, after all, isn't just wishful thinking. Uh, when, I, when I think about the things that I hope for uh, in life, uh, at least uh, this, this past year, I, uh, I hoped for a, a, a new car uh, because my, my old car uh, died late last year. And, and even though we, we haven't had a chance to, to buy a car yet, uh, but you know, we're kind of delaying this process, trying to save some money uh, along the way. And, and we hope that as we're waiting, that we won't really have a, a, a great need for a second car. We, we hope that insurance isn't going to go up. And, and we hope that uh, car dealerships are still going to, uh, to have interest-free uh, rates for the next you know, five years. Uh, my kids also recently uh, started going back to, to school physically. Uh, we hope that as they're in school interacting with other students that they're not going to get the coronavirus and that they're not going to catch it and, and pass it on to us because we haven't gotten the vaccine yet. Um, and, and recently, the, the government said that uh, the vaccine is supposed to be available for, for all people in the state of California by, by mid-April. And I hope that's going to come true because when it, when it comes out, I'm definitely going to be, be taking this vaccine. All these things I hope for, but yet at the same time, I know that there's no guarantee um, that I'm going to receive any of these things or any of these things that I hope for will actually be as the way that I envision. But when we think about or when we look at the biblical definition of hope, it's not just wishful thinking. It's, it's the opposite of that. It's, it's confident expectation. So when, when Peter is talking about uh, this, this living hope, he's talking about something that's, that's guaranteed um, in the future uh, because it's based on not only the promises of God, but it's also based on something that's, that has happened already. Uh, it's based on the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. Now we see in verses four to five that, uh, that through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead uh, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, we are, we are to receive this spiritual inheritance that won't just you know, go away. Um, and not only will it not go away, but that it's kept in heaven for you and it's also shielded by God's power. Uh, this word uh, inheritance, it's the, the same word that's used to refer to uh, Israel's promise, possession uh, of the land uh, as uh, given to them uh, by, uh, by God in the uh, Old Testament. This, this land that the Israelites were, uh, that they were supposed to receive uh, was guaranteed to them by God. Nobody uh, were, were able to, to take it uh, from them, nothing was going to separate them, you know, from this land. It cannot be uh, destroyed. Um, and for us, of course, like we're not going to receive this inheritance of land, but we're going to receive a, a better inheritance, a, a spiritual uh, inheritance, this gift of salvation that will be completed when Christ comes back. This is the hope that we have for the future. So why can we have this, this confidence? Why can we have this, this confidence that we are going to receive this inheritance? It is because God has promised uh, this inheritance by his word. And we know that when God promises something, he is always true to his words. He, he, his, his words uh, never fails. When, when Jesus promised his, his disciples uh, that he would die and would rise again, we know that he did. 
Now, if the tomb was not empty, uh, if his body was, was still there, then of course that changes everything for our future. We can't take Jesus' word uh, as it is. We can't look at the things that God has promised and, and, and believe in them. But the tomb was empty. Jesus did rise again. And we know that because of all these things, that his words are true. And so because uh, Christ has, has been resurrected, that he's been raised bodily, uh, that he has conquered not only uh, death, but also the penalty uh, of sin, um, all these things have been given to us uh, as well. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, Paul says, and if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. So all the things that we read about, all the things that we believe uh, about God and things that he has promised to us, the things that we hold on to for hope, all these things would, would, would be in vain. They would be of, of, of no value to us. And we know that, that Peter, after he had denied Jesus, after he had turned away from him, after he had seen him crucified and died, he must have been extremely uh, depressed during that time. He must have felt hopeless. But yet, Peter was an eyewitness to the resurrected Christ. At first, he maybe did not believe of the reports uh, that he had heard, but after he had seen him, after he had encountered him, uh, his whole life changed around. Uh, his, his, his doubts were, were no longer there. His depression, his, his gloom uh, over the crucifixion, over the death of Christ were turned into a living hope because he believed in the words and in the promise of, uh, of Jesus. And that's what gave Jesus hope. And that, that is what gives us hope as, as well. Our future is as sure as what has happened on Easter morning. So we have this hope of salvation, but we also have this joy of salvation as well. When we think about joy of salvation, it may not be something that many of us um, really ponder on uh, a lot. Uh, if I were to ask you, what gives you joy? Uh, you might give me you know, different, uh, different answers. You might tell me that your, your family gives you joy, your, your, your hobbies give you joy, that sleep or food uh, gives you joy, that having financial security uh, gives you joy. But for every believer, uh, when, when the question is asked of you, what is the one thing that gives you joy? The answer should, should be universal. It should be the salvation from God gives us joy. Now, Peter says in verse 9, you know, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is something that has been, you know, promised to us. Um, you know, our, our full salvation is something that we are going to be uh, receiving and the, uh, at the end as, uh, because of the result of our, of our faith. But yet for a lot of us, um, you know, we, may not, we may not experience the joy uh, of that gift. And it's not that the, the, the gift isn't good, but it's because sometimes the, um, the, the weariness of life, the trials of life, uh, the pressures and the, and the sorrows of life, may drown out the realities of that great gift of salvation. Um, this, this past year, we, my family and I, we haven't been able to uh, do much traveling. But in, in the past, when we, when we did used to travel, uh, my kids were extremely excited about uh, you know, going to different places. But it's not so much traveling that they were interested in. Their, their greatest joy was uh, staying in a hotel, being able to watch TV, you know, from, from their rooms, from their beds. And, uh, you know, a lot of times my wife and I, we might be lucky and we might be able to, to, uh, to get a hotel room with uh, either two rooms or, you know, with a nice view. 
But sometimes we might get a view that's you know, not so good. Uh, when you look out the window, uh, all you might see is you know, maybe not the beach or beautiful mountainside, uh, but you might see the building next door. Uh, you might see something that's not very pretty uh, at all. Uh, but on, if you look at another window, uh, you might be able to see some you know, better, looking si uh, better looking sights. You might be able to see you know, the city uh, or, or the trees or whatnot. And some people, they might just focus on the window that stares out into uh, you know, the wall of another building or something that's not very pretty. Even when there's another window available, uh, where you can peer out into uh, something that's, you know, much more beautiful. And so some people in life, even though they have this great gift of salvation from, from God, they can't rejoice in it because they're staring out through the wrong window. Um, but when we think about this great gift of salvation, it's not something that just you know, kind of far away. Uh, yes, we're going through life and we're going through a lot of different uh, troubles and, and, and trials. And we know that one day all the pain and sorrow is, is going to be gone. But in the meantime, uh, we just have to, to suffer uh, through the realities of uh, what's going on in the world. Um, but according to, to Peter, the resurrection doesn't just benefit us uh, you know, in the future, but there's a, there's a, an additional benefit from the resurre resurre resurrection of, of Jesus that we may not uh, expect. One that's supposed to help us while we're here on this earth as we're going through suffering uh, and, and, and shame. So Peter says in, in, in verse six and verse eight, that because of this great gift of salvation, that we are to, to greatly rejoice and that we are to be filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. So, so knowing that we have this great gift is, is not, you know, it's not uh, sufficient uh, enough. Um, you know, we have this head knowledge of, of this gift that we are, are, are given. But Peter says that what, um, when you have this great gift, when you know about this great gift, that we need to put this into practice as well, that it should impact the way that we live. A, a living hope results in joy that is present in our lives. And, and Peter stresses that it doesn't matter, you know, what you're going through the, uh, you know, during your, uh, your stay here on earth. It doesn't matter what kind of trials uh, you're going through. And definitely the, the readers, uh, the people that he was addressing, and even for Peter himself, we know that they were going through all sorts of uh, persecution from, from other people. They were going through uh, troubles you know, from the government. Peter himself, uh, because of what he believed, he was crucified upside down, at least according to traditions. And despite all of these things, all the, the floggings, the, the imprisonments, uh, the death, the sorrow, Peter and all of these people, they continue to persevere with joy in their lives. And so we know that and we understand that, yes, there are troubles and trials uh, in our lives. Um, and they may cause uh, great grief to, to many of us, but that cannot take away the deep and abiding joy that is rooted in one's living hope in Christ. And, and part of the reason why we can have that joy in Christ is because we're able to, to focus on and anticipate the joy that is to come. Um, I think about it uh, in this way. Uh, when, my, when my kids are uh, thinking about their, their, their lives and kind of like their, their daily uh, uh, activities, they don't have a, I can't say that they have a lot of things to look forward to every day. Uh, but one of the things my kids will always ask me 
on on most days is what are we eating for lunch or what are we eating for for dinner? For some reason, they're always really excited about you know what they're gonna eat, and sometimes I had to give them you know the bad news. Uh, my mom would often you know cook for me and she'll give me some food, and sometimes I would tell I would tell them you're eating grandma's food you know today for lunch or you're or, we're eating grandma's food. Uh, for dinner, and not to say my mom's food is is not good. She's a, in fact, she's a really good uh, cook. But my kids sometimes like they get tired of of eating uh, her food, or sometimes they they want a little bit more variety, or sometimes they they just want to eat the unhealthy things. But if I were to tell my kids, yeah, for lunch, uh, you're going to be eating at McDonald's, or you're going to be eating instant noodles, or for dinner. Uh, we're gonna go out and eat uh, eat uh, sushi. They're extremely excited. They can't wait to you know they can't wait for lunch and for dinner to to arrive. And it's not that they have received the joy of that meal yet, but it's that anticipation of the things to come that is giving them joy. No matter what what they're what, no matter. Um, uh, how bad a day they're, they're having. They know that when lunch comes, when when dinner comes, and they get to enjoy the foods that they want to eat, it's going to be a joyous time. So anticipation is enough to give us joy. Um, yes, we might be going through uh, some deep troubles right now, but it is the hope that we hold on to that sh- surely give us joy it is the way that we that we look at life um you know do we have the right perspective in the way that we live are we anticipating the right things are we hoping in things that will not fade and will not uh, perish or do we put our hope in the things that will go away that will not truly satisfy so if you want to to rejoice in this life, uh, look at your new life. Look at your new hope, your new wealth, your inheritance, the security that we have in Christ. And the third thing that we should uh, see as we ponder the great gift of this salvation um, from God is that we need to look at the glory of salvation. Now, as I said before, Peter's readers, they were going through a lot of trials uh, in life. And if we were in their situation, and as I'm sure there's probably a lot of you uh, right here in the Bay Area or, you know, in other parts of the world, you might be thinking to yourselves, you know, why, why suffer for, for my faith? Is it, is it worth all the pain that I'm going through? And, and Peter's answer is to, is to get them to look away from their suffering to the salvation, to the gift of salvation, and why it is so great. So in verses uh, 10 and 12, uh, it says that uh, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you search intently and with the greatest care. Uh, they they long for for this gift of salvation they, they understood it as a as a as something that was given to them by the grace of uh, of God and they searched intently for it uh in in verse 12 it says that even angels long to look into these things so this gift of salvation it is it is great but not only is it is it great because it is a grace from God, um, but we have to understand why, um, how the resurrection ties into this gift of salvation, and what we can gain from this uh, as well. So when 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 Jesus when he was being crucified, uh, when he was going through uh, the sufferings on the cross. Uh, we know that he is the son of God, but yet he went through the, the shame, the, the disgrace uh, of dying on the cross. We know that he was uh, dishonored, that he was tortured, that he was ridiculed, uh, that he was beaten, that he was uh, spat upon. 
And he was crucified. He, he, he died. And, and for anyone at the time who was looking at him and at his life, they, they must have felt sorry for him. Um, not only was he rejected uh, by people, but it seemed like he was also rejected by, uh, by his father. He was forsaken uh, by God. But we know that three days later, that whole script was, was turned completely around. Um, God vindicated the life of his son by raising him from the dead. And, and it is through his resurrection that God also intends to give us a hope, a hope that is living and a hope that is for today, one that gives us joy. In verse 11, it says that he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. And I want you to notice the, the, the ordering of these words. It says that he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah. So there were sufferings that the Messiah would go through. But then after that, there would be glory or glories here that would follow. So we know that Jesus went through suffering, but when God raised him from the dead and, and resurrected him, God gave him glory. But a lot, but, uh, a lot of our lives, um, it can be seen like you know, Jesus dying on the cross. That might be the extent of how we uh, might compare our lives to, to Jesus. We might feel like we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death in the presence of, of, of many enemies with no hope uh, in sight. But yet, Jesus, his, his life did not just end on the cross. It did not just end in shame. God brought glory uh, to him. Um, and in the same way, we can have confidence in our Heavenly Father as well, because we know that what He did for Jesus, He will also do for us. Just as Jesus suffered uh, on the cross, uh, and just as we suffer in this world, we know that glory was given to Jesus, and that glory will be given to us as well. So even when, when our lives turn uh, to a place where uh, things are, are dark and, and hopeless, even when we face rejection and, and, and ridicule, uh, even when we uh, experience suffering, physical suffering or emotional suffering, even when we, when we experience loss uh, in our lives, we know that that is not the end of the story. We know that our, our lives are not just going to end uh, in cries of pain or in sorrow, uh, that all these things Will, will go away. Uh, not too long ago, um, uh, we, my wife and I um, and my kids, we went to our first birthday party that we had gone to in probably uh, over, well over a year. And it's kind of funny that the last birthday party that we had gone to uh, a year ago is also the, the, the same person that we're celebrating, one of uh, my son's uh, classmates. And so as we were there, I was talking to some of the parents' um, and we were talking about what we would do after SIP is lifted, after you know, we all get the vaccines. And I think almost all of us, we can't wait to, to travel and to fly uh, once again. But as of right now, the, the pains of, of traveling is, is so much so that many of us, we, we don't want to travel unless we absolutely uh, have to. And I, and I was talking to, to somebody and she had traveled from, um, you know, from Arizona to California. And she was saying how, you know, when she got on the, on the airplane, uh, because she, she had to move, uh, not only did she have to wear her, her N95 mask, but she had to put on her, her goggles. She had to put on, on a mask. She put on all this like protective uh, uh, devices. And even though her, her flight wasn't that long, she felt like it was an eternity. Uh, she wanted to do some reading on the plane. She wanted to do you know, different things to get her mind off these uh, things. But all she could think about was the discomfort 
that she was going through. But what kept her going during that whole flight was that she knew that after some time, all that discomfort was going to be gone. She was going to reach her destination and she was going to be able to experience the freedom, the freedom that she was uh, longing for. And so the thing that keeps us going is that we know what's coming next. We know that despite all the discomforts, all the pain uh, that we're experiencing right now, we can endear it because it's only temporary in the grand scheme uh, of life. We know that something better is going to be coming our way. And, and Peter says that we can endure whatever is going on uh, in our lives because of the great hope that God has given uh, to us, uh, that he will bring, bring us glory even as we're suffering right now. And so because Christ rose again, we can have hope for a future that gives us joy today. Christ died and rose again, and he is ready to meet us uh, even if we're facing uh, our hour of death. But more than that, he's also ready to meet us in the pressures of, of our daily lives. No matter what you're going through, Christ is sufficient for us. And so my question for you this morning is, do you have that great gift of salvation? Do you have an inheritance, a, a hope that is not just going to, to fade away based on the pressures of, of this world? Do you have something that is going to um, you know, bring you fulfillment? Do you have something that's going to carry you until the end? And if you do, is that great gift of salvation, is it really that precious to you? Or have you lost sight of it? Have you been, been looking at a, at, a, at a blank wall uh, because you've missed out on the joy of the salvation that God has given to us? And so even as we're going through the difficulties and the challenges of life, may we never lose our perspective. And may we know that we have uh, been uh, given a great gift of uh, salvation, that we have a hope that is living and that gives us hope in life. So let's pray. <clears throat> uh, Fire Lord God, we, we praise you, Lord, for you're a God that saves. Um, you are a God who has given us the greatest gift of all. Uh, and because we know that that Jesus has been risen from the dead, that your words uh, are true, that he has not only conquered the grave, but he has also conquered uh, sin, that he has freed us from the penalty uh, of sin and the power of sin, and one day the presence uh, of sin. And Lord, as we go through uh, the different uh, trials and, and, and turmoils of life, <clears throat> we know that we, we can't just ignore the pains of, uh, of these sorrows. Uh, but Lord, you, we know that, uh, that you are here with us uh, as well, uh, that we anticipate um, the future glories that we are to receive uh, from you when our salvation will be made complete uh, in heaven. And so Lord, even as we are going through um, all the troubles uh, of this life, may we have the right perspective uh, may we put our hope uh, in you and may we have a hope that is not just going to, to perish uh, in life, but that it is rooted uh, in your word and in the promises that you have uh, given to us, an inheritance that is not going to just fade away. So again, Lord, we thank you for this great gift of salvation, for the grace that you've given to us, one that we do not deserve and one that is given to us through the death and the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. And this Easter, Lord, may we realize what we have in our hands. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's sing the song of response as we res respond to uh, the words uh, of God this morning.
How great the chasm that lay between us! How high the mountain I could not climb! In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. To wear my sin and to bear my shame, the cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my Lord. As we uh, prepare our hearts for communion uh, this morning, uh, we are reminded uh, that the gift of salvation is something that, that is given to us 
purely through the mercy uh, and the grace of God. It's not something that we deserve uh, at all. And sometimes in life, um, it can be easy to forget um, that, that preciousness uh, of that gift. And so as we partake in communion uh, this morning, uh, it reminds us of not only uh, this gift, but also what, what Christ had to suffer through, uh, what, he, what he did uh, for us. And so I do invite everyone who has put their faith in, in Jesus to, uh, to come together and to partake uh, together. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 to 29, <clears throat> uh, this is what it says. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Uh, so let's have a moment of reflection as we think about the great sacrifice that Christ uh, had to go through, the price that he had to pay uh, so that we might be found sinless uh, before um, our Heavenly Father. And also uh, it gives us a chance to, uh, to grab the bread and the cup uh, as well. So let's have a moment of uh, reflection. As we partake in the bread uh, together, uh, we are reminded of Christ's body broken uh, for us on the cross. Uh, let's partake together. As we partake in the cup together, we are reminded of Christ's blood that was shed on our behalf uh, so that we may have salvation. Uh, let's uh, drink this cup together. Let's pray. Uh, for our Lord God, we, we do not take lightly uh, the price that Jesus paid on a cross uh, on our behalf. 
uh, we reflect on the suffering uh, that he had to go through. Um, but we know, Lord, that just as he was raised uh, from the dead, that he was able to exp- experience uh, the glory uh, you know, from you. Uh, we know that, Lord, we will also experience, experience your glory one day as well. And so, Lord, we uh, just thank you for uh, the gift of salvation that you've given uh, to us. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the mercy and the grace that you've shown uh, to us. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, that we are able to continue to be in a relationship with you because of what has been done on the cross. Lord, we Thank you and we praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's uh, sing the doxology and we will have the benediction uh, afterwards. receive the benediction. May the power of Christ's resurrection go with us. May the good news of this wondrous day go with us. May the promise and hope of Easter go with us. May we in the days ahead sing, pray, live, love, act, and serve all for the glory of God. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So once again, thank you for worshiping with us uh, this morning. Um, If you want to continue to have some time of reflection, a time of discussion, uh, we have questions online that you're able to download and do at your own time uh, and at your own pace. And I just want to remind you today uh, as well that uh, we will be having uh, a corporate time of prayer online, uh, but it's not going to be at 1 p.m., uh, but in fact, it will be at 1.30 uh, p.m. Uh, because we are having some uh, in-person outdoor services uh, today as well. Uh, so because of that, uh, we are shifting the prayer time from 1 to 1.30. So please join us for that. So if you don't have the link, you can contact us and we would be more than happy to give that uh, to you. Uh, so once again, uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. And hope to see you next time. Have a a blessed Easter and a blessed rest of the week. Bye.